everyone. Adam here. So was your podcast. I have another interview for you today. I got to sit down with Eleanor Lambert to talk about her newest movie, Time Now. This was a really fun interview, uh, not just because Eleanor's a really personable, fun, upbeat person, but it was also her first feature. If you check her IMDb, it's one of the first things she's done. Which so it was really cool getting the perspective of somebody who is so new to the field. And so it was really fun getting that incredibly fresh perspective. And it was also fun deep diving on Time Now because it was a good movie, very well made. And she does a fantastic job in it. Review of that coming. So, you know, stay tuned to the channel. Uh, so here's my interview with Eleanor. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, Adam here. So was your podcast. I'm sitting down with Eleanor Lambert to talk about her newest movie, Time Now. How you doing, Eleanor? Doing great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Adam. This Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, it's definitely going to be fun. Uh, before we get to Time Now, though, I always like to ask creative people how they got their start. I mean, Time Now is basically my start, which is pretty amazing. Um, I got so lucky and, and and blessed to be asked to do this so early in my um my career <laughs> it was very exciting Spencer called me up and said um I believe in you is basically what he said he was like you can do this and I'm really excited to you know I'm hopeful that you will take on the role of Jenny and I couldn't couldn't really believe it but here we are almost you know three and a half years later after the making of Almost four years since that first phone call, which is just so wild. So like, oh, really? Wow. I know. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. It's craziness. For sure. <laughs> so uh, had he seen like a short or something that you did? Maybe something on stage? I think Spencer sort of went off of his gut feeling, which was very sweet. And I actually worked at Spencer's uh, mom's. I worked, I worked as an employee under Spencer's mom, just like randomly for about nine months the year before and I left that job to begin my acting classes so okay. I think that word just sort of traveled that you know there's a friend who's taking acting class who might be available and I definitely was and very excited <laughs> yeah that's awesome yeah was there any um apprehension on taking on such a big role for like your first feature length on the one hand, definitely. I mean, it's it's daunting, no doubt, to be taking on a, a lead role. But on the other hand, it was kind of the most perfect, like, initial role because I got a lot of time in front of the camera, but it was also very... Um, it's It was a grassroots sort of project. So I don't, I don't mean to... It's just, it was nice to be on a set with a bunch of people who wanted to be there, a bunch of people who were dedicated to the project had been working with Spencer to make this sort of a reality already. And that is the best sort of energy, in my opinion. I think it's, it's if you can be on a set where everybody wants to be there, where everybody is in each other's business in the best possible way. So it was like a really big, it was a support. I was supported. We were all really supporting each other. And I think that you know, for taking on something that was a, a bit daunting, it was clear to me before I even showed up that we were all taking care of each other and we were all there because we wanted this project to succeed. We wanted this story to be told. So on the one hand, yes. And then on the other hand, the more I got to chat with Spencer and Claudia Black and Spencer and I spent a lot of time talking on the phone um, leading up to, to leaving to shoot. So, and then, you know, I spoke with the DP with Sean and, 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 and it was, you know, by the time I showed up there, I practically felt like we were all friends already. And by the end of day one, we were. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, that's really good. It's, it's great that you had such a positive, I know, not I'm first so experience, but very early on. Yeah. I feel so blessed. I have <laughs> been really so lucky to, have had that experience kind of over and over. And I'm just like, thanks. Whoever's looking out for me. I'm very grateful. To be <laughs> surrounded by such driven and kind people. I mean, everybody on that set was top notch, 10 out of 10. That is actually something that I'm kind of noticing as a pattern with these uh, indie smaller budget movies is that you're not the first person who's mentioned that it's nice that everyone wants to be there. Yes, totally. And, you know, on top of it, no one's, I mean, for this project, I'll speak for myself in this project. You know, I'm not 
whisked away to a trailer or anything like that. The, the, the departments are all kind of on set together. So I got to learn a lot also as my first project. I got to learn a lot about how things get lit and how long it takes to set up a shot and what information everybody has to make this sort of all come together. Because, you know, sometimes on these larger projects, obviously the people working on them have worked on all kinds of sets. So they know that stuff already usually, but sometimes you don't, sometimes you're just sort of, you know, you, you're kept in your lane and that makes a lot of sense for a massive production. You can't have everybody all over the place, but for right. a small production like this, it was so nice to literally all be in each other's grill. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, no, I loved it. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and to backtrack even further, I know it's a little bit out of order, but uh, okay. when did you decide or why did you decide to pursue acting? Oh, great question. Um, I grew up with um, a very specific experience of, of acting and films. My, both my parents are actors and everyone in my family has some relation to the business. And so I just, I grew up understanding acting as either whatever my parents did when they left. And even when I got to go to set, I was very much like in the makeup trailer, having my face painted in between takes and stuff like that, you know, it was so sweet. Hi, kitty cat. <laughs> Sorry. No, it, it makes me so happy. So brings me joy. Um, and then also when I was younger, my dad would take me, what we would do together when he would come to town is we would just go and watch ridiculous movies. Like the most ridiculous, you know, like the Italian job and crank and like just these silly, silly entertain like entertainment value films. So of course I had grown up watching good, good films. No, no, good is such a, subjective thing but you know quality i know what you mean though quality. yeah the, the um, award season movies known. or the popcorn movies <laughs> exactly and are notoriously known as classics for a reason of course and but so i grew up not really understanding acting as an art form and it wasn't until i was i think i was 24 and i i started dating my current partner um and he's an actor as well and he would get sent his his sides and his scripts for work and he would like disappear into some place and i could i could watch these like gears turning in his brain and i was like what's going on <laughs> like where are you going and what's happening in your brain and he's he was sort of the one to introduce me to acting as uh, an art uh, as an art form and as a craft and as a as a as an honoring of of the human experience which is what i have sort of understood acting to be okay yeah it's, so it wasn't until a bit a bit later yeah. i mean you know i'm still i'm still a total kid but <laughs> <laughs> later in my you know kidness <laughs> right it's it's interesting that you you were kind of raised in it where it was not a big deal it was not like something totally different and unique and special right. but it still took until i don't want to say later but it, it took some time before it clicked as to what you were just describing with your boyfriend definitely definitely yeah. definitely and it's funny you know yeah at hollywood and la and even out here i'm in new york and it's a bit of a bubble you know we're very very much surrounded by like-minded people and people in similar you know professions so yeah, I did. I did grow up in a space where it was normal, but mm -hmm. I obviously, you know, I do understand that that is not the case. <laughs> it's just the case in this very small little bubble where everyone's, you know, doing that. So. Yeah, and uh, I don't. I don't mean to get too personal, but were you pursuing other uh, career paths before you decided, like, hey, I should get into this acting thing? I, I was, no, please, not at all. That's not too personal. Feel free okay. to whatever you want. <laughs> I was modeling for a while, which was very fun. You know, it's, uh, what I really loved about modeling is sort of the same thing I love about, I'm realizing everything, is that I like to be a part of a team. I, I like to be a cog in a wheel of like bringing something to life. I, I, I loved being on set, meeting people from all over the world which happens on most sets, which is cool. And, you know, if one person doesn't show up, the whole thing falls apart. And I think that that, that energy of like, everybody is here making this happen together is it feels nice. You know, you feel like a little 
little family for the day, which I love. Um, I was writing. I was um, I, I started writing uh, at the Village Voice, writing about music, covering DJs, which was the coolest thing in the world for me because I've been listening to dance music since I was like 12. So by the time I'm 19 and it's finally becoming more mainstream, I get to really be at the helm of that at such an amazing publication. I mean, it was just, it was just, it, it was amazing. It was super cool. And then I, I, I did some more freelance work at like the, at um, Team Vogue and Vice and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's a freelancer. Now, I mean, yeah. <laughs> everyone's a freelance writer. So that's just to say that there was a certain point where I think the things I wanted to write about were the things that were the most important to me. My voice is not the voice that really needed to be heard. So I sort of took a step back and I was like, I need to be listening and learning right now. You know, I'm not, I'm not an expert and I definitely don't want to pretend to be. And I certainly don't want to oversaturate a space that, you know, where, where we have an opportunity to actually hear from, hear from some, some new folks. So I was really, I just sort of took a step back from that and, and I was mostly just modeling and then, oh, okay. Now I'm here. <laughs> oh, you really, uh, you go all in for whatever you're interested in. <laughs> Maybe. If you say so. <laughs> I'll I, I'm saying it as a positive thing. <laughs> Thank you. No, I do too. I, I appreciate the compliments. I, you know, we're always our own harshest critic. So I appreciate the. the yeah, for sure. I think that's what keeps, you know, people like you driven being your harshest critic. Yeah. Right. It's true. I guess that's so. That's true. Yeah. It's a good thing as long as you can uh, also relax on yourself a little bit. Exactly. Go, go as gentle as you can while still being. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah definitely. Um, okay. So again, I know we're way out of order, but yes. you had kind of known Spencer just in your life before yeah. acting. Totally. And then I never actually met him though, which is funny. Oh, okay. I know like totally random, but we, we met, I think we met, we must've met. On set? Christ, is that even possible? Anyway, my memory is ridiculous. Please continue. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. Not at all. <laughs> you're you're the guest. You do the talking. Um, <laughs> so you got to kind of bypass the audition process on this one, which I'm sure was nice. <laughs> Pinching myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what about the script specifically stood out to you when you mm. first got to read it? Yes, definitely. That's a great question. Um, well, Jenny, I, I particularly really like Jenny because Jenny, Jenny felt like very human to me. Mm -hmm. She's, I mean, she's, she's the polar opposite of me in so many ways. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm emotionally reactive and responsive and she's very like repressed, suppressed, doesn't, ex doesn't, doesn't want any kind of intimacy or vulnerability. And I think that is very human. Jenny, what, what drew me to the script and to Jenny was we follow Jenny throughout the story. She's our like protagonist. Um, but through her, we get to meet so many different kinds of people and we get to meet, we get to see the cornucopia of ways that a family and a chosen family and a, just a community all respond differently to trauma and to tragedy. And I think that Spencer did a great job in crafting these characters who embody various sort of impulses, natural human impulses that we have when we're faced with something tragic, something painful. And I thought that Jenny was so interesting because Jenny doesn't really seem to have a, reaction to a lot of things that happen around her and the situations that she finds herself in or the situations that she puts herself in. And she's just, she's, she, she, when she does have a response, there's something very bizarre about it. And it feels out of adjustment. And sometimes she feels like she's still 17, which is when she left home initially and ran away from a initial tragedy. And, so I was drawn, I was drawn to the way that Jenny leads, leads the story and shows how, you know, unhealed trauma and repressed feelings lead to more trauma and more pain. And yeah, I think that, I think that, you know, Jenny dives into her external world as a way of bypassing her internal experience. And then that 
inevitably explodes in a really tragic way. Yeah. Okay. Way. So, you know, I mean, it's tough. It was a tough, it's a tough story. The loss of someone close to us is un, un, pretty much unbearable. And so I think that, you know, we can say, face your feelings, face these, these difficulties, but it's really hard. And we're not handed the tools to do that. If we want to do that for ourselves, we need to actively seek it out and work against our impulses and work against the, you know, the, the advice of like the overculture and stuff. And so, you know, I think Jenny's and everyone here is, is dealing with what happens when we are told that some of our natural kind of human responses are bad or wrong or negative. And so you're not only dealing with these horrible feelings about a situation, about a tragedy, but then you're also dealing with your own shame about just your own human humanness. So that's, that's what drew me to this, I think was, was the, was that, was that yeah, sort of the, and that exp that attempt at exploring? You know, we've got the caretaker character, we've got the diving into work character, we've got the taking it all on themselves character, we've got the totally shut off from everything character. So, I thought that was you know that sort of familial drama and just that community of like what happens when a bunch of people all go through one experience together. Like you're gonna get a bunch of different responses naturally yeah that's a that's a really good succinct way to put the movie itself for people who haven't seen it yet is uh like you kind of just hit the nail on the head i think thank you well i've, I've had lots of time and practice <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah um so i'm sure you had experiences seeing how uh like your parents did it or people around them when you were growing up and then you mentioned your boyfriend where he just kind of would disappear what did in a good you borrow <laughs> oh yeah yeah in a good way yeah uh, what did you um, what did you borrow from those experiences, and what did you have to figure out on your own to get into a character that was so different than you? Mm, mm, mm. I think what I got from my partner is take it ser like the, take it seriously, and really be um, the 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 form not the formula, but sort of the um, the like statement that I learned, I I'm, I'm a trained actor. My parents were not trained, which is incredible. I mean, they've been trained through the doing of it, but um, is, is doing truthfully under imaginary circumstances. And I learned through my partner and also through my two year acting training that like, you have to really do, do it. Don't just, don't go to 75 because if this were real, you wouldn't be at 75. We're pretty much always at a hundred percent ourselves, except for obviously those moments where whew, you're keeping, trying to keep it together. And I think what was the most, what is I, the most difficult when dealing with someone who is so different from yourself is Eleanor, the actor needs to know everything that's going on with Jenny, but Jenny doesn't know everything that's going on with Jenny. So dancing that fine line of how to capture this as an actor, but not over indicate or overexpose the character in a way that doesn't, that isn't doing truthfully for this circumstance, you know, and not letting your because you want to be you. The idea is to be as as much you as you can be in this circumstance and in this emotional situation. And, but so finding that balance of, of Eleanor as Jenny is definitely, you know, is something I'm, I'm looking forward to exploring more as I work, especially now because I just finished finally my two year program that was supposed to end in March of 2020, which ends tonight. Um, <laughs> exciting. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting. Um, but, but, um, that 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 that's you know that's what i that's what i would say i have learned is the most it's just you gotta you gotta go for it you gotta go for it you just have to like even if it's weird and doesn't make sense and you wish it was different like at least you can go well you know what i did i did it i did it like i did the weird thing i did it as best as i could and yeah and in terms of my parents i mean Geez, I don't know. I've just, I've just finally started asking for advice because, you know, I really just started working. Mm -hmm. 
this is like the, the, that project was the first thing I did. And then I decided to, you know, I, and then I continued with my, with my studies. And then I started auditioning in August of 2020, obviously via zoom and all of that, like everybody else. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that properly answers your question. Sorry. No, it, no, it definitely does. I'm, I'm oh always interested God. in people's <laughs> processes and their, their kind of workflow. Great. Uh, you, you did mention you have to put as much as yourself into the character as you can, but you yes. also have to have a little bit of car compartmentalization. Mm -hmm. um, this movie goes to some like really deep, dark places for yeah. your character. Yeah. Was it tough to kind of snap out of that at the end of the day? Honestly, the only reason I'm going to say no is because we shot this movie in 15 days. So okay. by the end of my days, I was like, Oof, yeah, the <laughs> there's no thinking. <laughs> so I think if I'd had a little bit more time to like decompress or if I had like, um, you know, more breaks in between, I maybe would have been more aware of what was going on after the fact. But I was just so so ready to, to to hit the reset button so I could go back. I think I just sort of stayed. It was honestly a great experience for me because, you know, I'm I'm so me obviously we're all so used to being in our own experience and so I think it was just good for Eleanor to have these three weeks of allow of being different and allowing a different ex internal experience which is just you know helps helps build like compassion and empathy for you know all, all kinds of people in the world yeah okay that makes a lot of sense yeah so I guess maybe yes to your question. Maybe I did just stay in it because we were just kind of doing it the whole time. We didn't really stop. Of course we had days off and there was nothing <laughs> nefarious going on. Right. Right. But it was by, busy <laughs> by the book, but you know, it was, it was a lot. Yeah. Especially for a 15 day shoot. Cause you're in virtually every scene. Yeah, it was a lot. It was cool. <laughs> I mean, it was so cool. It was like, that is what you want. That's right. what you want. You want to be immersed. You want to be working. You want to also to not have that, you know, time necessarily to like oh, totally release and then have to build all that back up mm -hmm. again. It probably was best for that kind of a character. So different for me to just be in it, in it, in it, in it, because you just kind of stay there and you don't have to do the spikes and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, that's true. It might have been more exhausting if you yeah. had a couple of weeks off in between scenes. And exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you mentioned this. It was just a fifteen-day shoot, which is crazy <laughs> fast. I know. Um, but you also mentioned earlier that it was four years from the time you got the phone call to the time to the right movie's now, out. To right now, we shot in April of 2019, so we did get to miss attempting to do this in a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think Spencer called me maybe in December or January, I want to say. So we're coming up on it. Maybe not exactly four years. But yeah. Um, yeah. It was a long time. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> I guess that's maybe the nature of indie movies. Like things just take time. and Things take time. Totally. Definitely. And, you know, Spencer... Spencer also had, you know, started, wrote, started writing this in 2016. Wow. So he's been dedicated to this from day one to it will continue. I have no doubt he is. He had such a clear vision, such clear choices, such deliberate, deliberate focus, but also was one of those amazing directors where he's like, here are your parameters play. So fun. Yeah. So well, fun. Cool. So we would get what we wanted, what he wanted. And then we, when we had a little extra time, we would just like play it was really nice. Yeah. You got to do some exploring. Yeah. Happening, so that's awesome. Yeah. Did uh did the movie do any um like festivals or anything like that? It did. It got into the Austin Film Festival. It premiered okay. on Saturday, one. which was very exciting. And I didn't get to go because I was doing this play, <laughs> but that's okay because the whole point is to work. So I was just grateful to be working. Um and but I did get to send some friends, which was really fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was really nice. Did you ever get to see it with a live audience? No. No. Uh, no, I didn't. I'm I'm interested, you know, maybe there are rumblings of an attempt at a New York screening, which would be super cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. I feel like um 
I mean, just obviously as an outsider looking in that once you spend all this time and all this energy making, you'd want to get that crowd experience. I mean, definitely want to get the crowd experience just because I, that, that is the, that is the culmination of all of this, as you said, (laughs) but on the other side of things, you know, I've, I think that there's, I'm a little, I don't know how to put this. Sometimes I, I get in my head a little about watching my work because I don't want to get in my head about my work. Yeah. I know what I look like when I do things. It's inevitable that I'm going to be thinking about what I look like. And I really don't want to do that. I can see that. Yeah. No, I just don't. I, and that, you know, that never happened to me when I really, when I was modeling. So maybe this is just kind of, you know, some big monster I'm building up in my head and it's like a super non-factor and I'll find that out down the road when I've done more work to watch. <laughs> but that's something I've been just a little bit cognizant of as I'm like, I'm going to watch this as few times as possible. I could definitely see that. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to get self-conscious. You don't want to second guess every choice you've already made. And- I can't do it. I have right. to be able to just ugly cry if that's what the script <laughs> needs or scream and get red in the veins. Like I just want to let it. And I have a feeling that, you know, I, I, I'll, you know, when I'm in acting class, like, Whatever needs to come out comes out. So, like, I don't think that it will really ever get get in the way. But it's just one of those things that you're like, don't do that because what if this happens and you get all right. <laughs> news day about it, right? You build it into this whole thing. Anyway. Yeah, everyone's got their process. Yeah. Plus, exactly. you just said you're doing stage, so you are getting audience feedback all the time. I did my first on stage performance. It was part of the New York Theater Festival. We had, it was a short play, three runs, which again was such a wonderful introduction to stage as opposed to like eight shows a week and running for six months. Like that would be very daunting, will be very daunting if that ever happens for me. But um, it was awesome. I mean, it was really scary. The first time I went on, I was like, I don't know how people do this. Yeah, I just right. their bodies through this chemical release that's happening. <laughs> side of me but by the third one I felt much you know much calmer much more chill and that's really cool it's got to be a totally different animal yes and I and I understood that cerebrally but it's another thing doing it and experiencing Mm -hmm. it obviously and so having done that I was like wow that was something (laughs) (laughs) but something you want to go back and do again I'll definitely do it again if that look I want to work yeah. I'm, I'm excited to get working. So I'm, I'm, I'm open. I am open. Great. Yeah. And uh, being New York based, are you finding enough stuff to audition for? Yes, I would say so. I mean, you know, auditions now, everything's digital. So you can kind of do it from anywhere, which is really fun. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah. At this, at this point in time. And it's funny because I am, this is my favorite. I love being with people talking with people and so being in the room with a casting director is kind of ideal just because that's how I feel the most comfortable but on the flip side you know you get to get the tape right mm-hmm. right you know feeling as close to right whatever the hell that means but, you, know, <laughs> you could do a take two other take adjective <laughs> that I'm not thinking of right now <laughs> right <laughs> just yeah. got to do your thing yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, well, Eleanor, I don't want to eat up your whole afternoon, but that was a ton of fun. I really this appreciate you so coming lovely. on. Adam, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Um, if you want to tell everybody uh, where they can see time now, and then if you want to plug like your socials or anything else you might have out there. Sure. Okay. Um, time now is uh, available um, in certain theaters and in um, on video on demand uh, today. Today is the day, the <laughs> 26th. Um, so whenever this airs, it will still be available, which is good. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, um, and then as for, gosh, for my social, I mean, I'm just at my, I'm just on Instagram and my handle is Ello underscore kitty, like hello kitty without the H. <laughs> All right. It was a nickname from high school and it stuck. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, again, thank you. Congratulations on the movie. It was really good. Uh, I never would have guessed it was your first project. Thank you. Uh, wow. You did an exceptional job. So thank you, Adam. That's really, really nice and means so much to hear. That feedback just hits me in the heart. So thank you. 
Definitely. Yeah. And uh, thank you again for coming on. Good luck. My with pleasure. Everything. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'd like to thank Eleanor Lambert one more time for coming on to talk to me about her newest movie, Time Now, along with her career and her creative journey so far. If Time Now is any indication, I think she's got a long way to go in, you know, the best of ways. She's a fantastic actress already, so I'm looking forward to her next project. A lot more interviews, a lot more new movie coverage. As I said, there's a review for Time Now coming very shortly as the movie is out today of the time of this posting, the 26th. So make sure you like and subscribe. You're not going to want to miss out. Also, make sure you listen to So Was Her Podcast every single week, wherever you get your podcasts. SoWizardPodcast.com is your resource for reviews, recommendations, videos, merchandise, and more. So Was Her Podcast can also be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows. We love hearing feedback, so drop some out in the comments, leave us something on social media. All of our accounts will be found after the show and in the show notes. And on a more personal note, a really good friend and I have an ongoing comedy comic series out right now. It's called Social Studies. It's a slice-of-life comedy comic about the ridiculousness of the high school experience. We style after the 90s cartoons that we grew up on. We write it like a sitcom. We keep it a lot of fun. We've been getting fantastic feedback so far. It's a great time to jump on board. Chapter one is out now. Seven full issues, full color, full everything, full awesome. Chapter two is coming in just a few months. So check all that out at socialstudiescomic.com. Thanks.